Hello, brother Anthony. So, uh, I'm looking around. Mm -hmm. Kind of quiet. Sort of reminds me of this time I was in the desert in Mexico. I didn't say New Mexico, I said Mexico to Mexico for real. Mm. You know, now you might ask, why was I in the desert of Mexico? That would be a good question. Mm -hmm. I know you might ask it, I know you didn't ask it, but I figure if you might ask How it, I do might ask it. You asked? Okay, good, yeah. good, I'm glad you asked it. You see, well, let, let, me, let, let me just make a statement. Mm. There's no such thing as drug abuse. Ooh, what did I say there? There's no such thing as drug abuse. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Now, if I said that out loud, in fact, I think I did. Anyway, if I said that out loud, a lot of people look at me like I'm crazy, like I don't know the English language. <laughs> but the truth of it is, is that I know the English language very well. In fact, they, they tell me I got it. Well, I know I got a degree, undergraduate degree in English literature. Hmm. I got that word from you the other day, literature. I like that word. <laughs> But the reason why I say that because I think people get confused. See, there's there's substance use and there's substance abuse, and they think they get the things mixed up. But then when when well, I should say no, it's not. I, I messed up there. It's substance use and substance misuse. That's what I meant to say. See how you get tricked up with these words. See, you can't abuse a substance. You can only misuse a substance. You can use a substance or misuse a substance. You see? Now, what they really mean, they don't mean substance abuse or drug abuse. They actually mean body abuse. See, because when you misuse a substance, you basically misuse it someplace, namely, properly in your body, which means you're abusing your body. You're abusing your body with that substance. And that's what they mean. But this, the, you should, they should be precise. People should say that because if you think you're going to beat up on the substance, you're not going to beat up on the substance. You, you beat up on, or, or you're going to beat up on sugar all day long. Sugar don't care if you beat up on it, <laughs> but your body cares. You put too much sugar in it. You know, you're, you're using some sort of uh, substance that's that really rocks your world, as they used to say. Well, you know, you're going to rock your world with that substance. You're gonna, you know, let me give you, let me give you an example. I mentioned Mexico before. Mm -hmm. There's this thing. There's this, uh, you know, there's this, there's there's rituals, you know, and there's routine. But there's a ritual uh, that happens uh, every year in Mexico, round about uh, round about Easter time. You know, right before Easter time. And what you do, you, you fast, or whatever have you. But you, you look through the desert. You're in the desert, and you look through the desert. You're looking for a substance. The substance you're looking for is this plant. It's a cactus plant, and it's called peyote. Now, peyote gives you sort of hallucinations and stuff like that. But you know, that's that's when you abuse. It. If you if you take it in the wrong way, you know, you abuse it. But if you take it in the right way, like no, no, the, no, you, uh, you misuse it. That's right. If you misuse it, you misuse it. Exact. Thank you for the correction, brother. Mm -hmm. But you see, how you're supposed to use it. Is the way the original, you know, uh, uh, native, you know, natives to that area used to use your topless people to that area, and they use it. They they take it because they have to go up the mountain. They have to go way up the mountain to to another area, and if you take it wrong, and you're just sitting around, well, the first thing you do is you throw up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what happens. It tastes like quinine. I, 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 I used it. Now you say, well, how, brother, how'd you use it? Because I took that trip. But I was interesting because that particular time I was doing a, was doing that Easter, like I said, that particular Easter I was fasting a lot, which means I didn't have a whole lot of stuff in my system, just water and you know some fruit and stuff like that. And when we found uh, the peyote at the bottom of the desert there, uh, you know I didn't actually find any. Somebody else found some. They gave me some. And usually when you take it, people throw up. I didn't throw up. People look at me like I was like, oh, something wrong with this guy. Mm. And he's you know super native or something. Yeah, it's not something like that. Well, it's just because I used it right. But right before we walk, walked up this mountain, you go to the top of the hill and then you look over, top of the mountain, you look over. Well, somebody gave me a, a, a grapefruit. Well, you know, then, you, then you walk. Now, this one, the one, this particular trip, somebody said something very wise to me. They said, you know, we all gonna go up this mountain, but we all not gonna, even if you travel exactly in my footsteps, we're not gonna take the same path. I understood what he meant. It was, it was pretty wise to me. People say a lot of wise things in the desert, especially when they're taking this peyote and stuff like that. 
Well, anyway, I started on. I sort of got separated from the group, and I was gone for hours. I just had my beer and bow. I had a beer and bow, you know, it's an kind of instrument type. I had my beer and bow, and uh, and then I, in fact, at one point, I went. I was going the wrong way. I was. I definitely was going the wrong. Way. I was going over this, this precipice on both sides. It was like you know, I don't know, 100 meters on both sides. I'm walking over like a balance. I was oh, I'm going the wrong way. Backed up. Then I was going, and I was getting tired. I was getting really, really tired. I didn't feel any pain, you know, anything like that in my legs because I had taken this peyote. And, but I heard like a donkey bring over this, oh, they don't sound right, I don't want to go that way. And then a, a gentle breeze would blow and I would go that way. So I was just sort of following the things, like, like lost in the wilderness kind of thing. Finally, I got to a point where I just couldn't go anymore. I just sat on this rock and I realized that, you know, I had, a, I had this grapefruit in, in, in the bag that I was carrying. So I took the grapefruit out, opened it up, just so exhausted, I was almost eating it, just about to eat it. And I hear, you know, some some, some goat herd, you know, the little bells that they have on the goats, you know. And uh, so this guy was coming back with a donkey. Now, I don't really speak very good Spanish. Well, I, it's like poor to fair Spanish. But this guy, I was so exhausted, I couldn't move. And this guy was on his donkey, donkey and I said, oh, Senor, por favor. Donde es mi amigos? You know, very exhausted. He looked at me, he sort of signaled for me to get on the back of his donkey. I was so tired, I couldn't even get on the back of his donkey. He just sort of pointed that way. I just let him go by with the goats. Believe it or not, I know you're not going to believe this part. There was a dog coming back with him. I guess the dog, you know, herds the goats or whatever the dogs do. And the dog came by and sat right, well, stopped right next to me. He looked at me. He gave me this look as I was eating this grapefruit, which was giving me a little bit of strength. The dog looked at me like I said, you know, normally I would ask you for a piece of your grapefruit, but you look really, really beat, so I'll let you go this time. And he just tried it off. <laughs> anyway, to make a long story short, I, I, I finally got enough strength to walk it, and sure enough, that's where I met the group, the camp, the group there, and we spent that night up there overlooking the desert, very beautiful. It was a wonderful trip, but just goes to show, you know, you, you can abuse something. Or you can use something, you know. You can use it, misuse it, you know. So uh, that's that's it's, it's, it's one of those things that you know just plays in your mind as an audio dramatist. I should make that into a story sometime. I, I don't know if I will, because it's sort of a private story. But it's not private enough because I just told everybody. That's <laughs> one of those dispatches from the Austin Rector Emeritus. That would be me, T. From the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. Hmm. Mm.